In this life, the straight path is difficult to stay on. And that's why we ask Allah to keep us on it every single time we read Surah Al-Fatiha, at least. And when you're walking it here, you have doors with shayateen calling you to them on each side of you all the way until you die. And you also have these sins that are like thorny bushes and you have to hold yourself tight seeking to avoid those sins. And the only thing that gets you through is that you are hearing the call of Allah ahead of you consistently and you're moving towards it. The Sirat in this life has the paradise of certainty ahead, Jannah to Yaqeen, the paradise of certainty. And the hooks of sin and doubt are on its sides. The Sirat in the next life has the paradise ahead and the hooks of punishment are on all sides. The Prophet ﷺ said that the Sirat is thinner than a hair and sharper than a sword. And Abu Huraira narrated that the Prophet ﷺ said that I will be the first to cross the Sirat, this bridge over the fire. And he said the supplication, the dua of the Rusul, of the messengers of that day, and no one is going to be speaking on that day except for the messengers of Allah, is that all of them will be saying, Allahumma sallam, Allahumma sallam, Allahumma sallam, Oh Allah, keep us safe, Oh Allah, keep us safe, Oh Allah, keep us safe. And so as the Prophet sallam and the Prophets cross, the Prophet sallam said that there are hooks on the sides and they have these huge thorns, like the thorns of a Sa'dan, which is known to the Arabs for its size. But the enormity of those hooks are only known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so as you're standing there and you are hoping to cross this very quickly, your Prophet has already crossed. And Ibrahim السلام, and Isa السلام, and Musa السلام, these Prophets have crossed and they are all saying, Allahumma sallam, Allahumma sallam, Allahumma sallam. Oh Allah, keep us safe. Oh Allah, keep us safe. Oh Allah, keep us safe. Then the Prophet ﷺ went on to say, خُذُوا جُنَّتَكُمْ Take up your shields. They said, Ya Rasulullah, is there an enemy that's present? The Prophet ﷺ said, no. He said, rather your shields from the fire on that day are, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. All glory be to Allah, all praise be to Allah. There is no God but Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is great. And he said, verily they will come on the day of judgment as saviors and muaqibat, guardian angels. And he said, and they are al-baqiyatul salihat. They are the everlasting righteous deeds. And so you have your tasbih. All of the times that you made dhikr, they are shields for you as you're about to take that trip across the sirat. The Prophet ﷺ also said that your sadaqah, you'll see the similarities here. It's also a shield on that day. And the Prophet ﷺ said to Aisha radiallahu anha, very famous hadith, set up a barrier between yourself and the fire, walau bishaqi tamra, even if it's with half of a date. Now there are other things that the Prophet ﷺ mentions to us that are going to guard us. So essentially you want to be guarded from the punishment of the fire and you want to be able to cross with great speed. So one of the ways that you guard yourself from the fire touching you as you're about to cross over the Sirat is guarding the honor of your brother or sister. The Prophet ﷺ said, if anyone guards a believer from a hypocrite, Allah will send an angel and that angel will stretch out and extend and will guard your flesh on the day of judgment from the fire. But look at what he said on the other hand, the Prophet ﷺ said, but if anyone attacks his brother or sister, saying something, hoping to humiliate him, then Allah will restrain him over the Sirat, over Jahannam, until he is acquitted of everything that he said. So SubhanAllah, we see once again, how Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is defending the honor of the believers. Now remember we said that the opposite of the punishment of harming is the reward of helping. So in this station as well, the Prophet SallAllahu says something very beautiful. He says, وَمَنْ مَشَى مَعَ أَخِيهِ فِي حَاجَةٍ حَتَّى أَثْبَتَهَا لَهُ Whoever walks with his brother or sister regarding a need until he secures it for them. أَثْبَتَ اللَّهُ قَدَمَهُ عَلَى الصِّرَاطِ يَوْمَ تَزِلُّ فِيهِ الْأَقْدَامِ Allah will make his feet firm on the sirat on the day when the feet will be slipping. So as you approach now to make this move, the Prophet SallAllahu mentions another group of similar deeds. He says that trustworthiness and Siddatul Rahim, the ties of kinship, they will be sent. 
and they will stand at either side of the Sirat to the right and to the left. And they're going to protect you as you start to make your way across. And he said, the first of you is going to cross like lightning. And one of the Sahaba, he said, may my mother and father be sacrificed for you, Ya Rasulullah. What does it mean to cross like lightning? And the Prophet said, have you not seen lightning, how it comes and goes back in the blink of an eye? So some people will cross the Sirat like a blink of an eye. May Allah make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. Then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that some people will cross like the wind. And he said, some people will fly like birds. They'll cross it like birds. Some people like fast horses. And there will be some people that will be crawling on that day. And so the speed at which people cross is according to what? Once again, بِقَدْرِ in accordance with their deeds. And the Prophet ﷺ tells us that all along, he's standing on the Sirat saying, Allahumma sallam, Allahumma sallam. Oh Allah, save us. Oh Allah, save us. And he said وسلم, that people's deeds will be failing in strength. And so you'll have a person that's holding on to whatever he has, but as he's running out of deeds, he's crawling. And at the edges of the Sirat, you have those hooks and they catch those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded to be caught. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, some of them will be scratched, but they'll still be saved. And some of them will be piled up and they will spend some time in Jahannam until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees them from that punishment. Now, as for those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called his jiran, his neighbors on the day of judgment. In one narration, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the masjid is the home of every righteous person and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guaranteed that those who take up residence that find home in the masajid will have a ruh wa raha wa jawaz ala sirati ila ridwan Allah azza wa jal. They will have blessings, they will have mercy and they will have safe passage over the sirat until they reach the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so you have those people of the masjid and Allah takes care of them. And the masjid of course is there for what? The primary component of salah in the masjid is sujood, is prostration. It's called a place of prostration. And the Prophet sallallahu said that Allah azza wa will call out to the angels and tell them to pull out from the fire all of those who have a trace of Iman in their hearts. And how are they going to be known? The Prophet ﷺ said, by the trace of sujood on their foreheads. Listen to what the Prophet ﷺ said. He said, the fire of Jahannam cannot consume the place of sujood. SubhanAllah. You imagine that there are some people whose bodies are entirely burned, but the forehead is not because of the sajda. The one place of their bodies that is not burned is the place of their sajda. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah will cast them into the water of life from which they will be completely restored. Now, what are some other things you take with you to this momentous trial, to this occasion? You never lose husn al in Allah. You never lose a good assumption of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Expect well from your Lord. Prepare for the moment and then put your trust in His mercy, but expect well from Him so long as you are trying. The Prophet sallallahu said, I saw this man that was falling. And just as he was about to fall, his husn al in Allah, his good assumption of Allah came and it settled him on the sirat and he was able to cross in safety. And the reminder once again, all along, the Prophet Sallallahu is on the other side of the sirat saying, Allahumma sallam, Allahumma sallam. Oh Allah, save them, oh Allah, save them. And then the Prophet Sallallahu says finally, that I saw this man from my ummah crawling across the sirat. At times he was kneeling, at times he's just clinging on to it. And then suddenly his salawat on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they came to him and they took him by the hand and they stood him up upon the Sirat until he passed over it. And so as you've passed the final station of trial on that day and you've arrived saying Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and as the salawat grabbed you by the hand to keep you on that sirat, what then when you make it across to your Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he's waiting with your cup from his fountain.